It's um, terrific to see so many people here. We're very excited about the Food Forum today and um, very delighted uh, that we've had to expand. I'm hoping that the people at the very back can still see and can still hear everything that uh, we're uh, saying today here at the front, um, but that also that you'll be able to participate fully in the discussion as we go forward. So my job today is to set the context in relation to the, the healthy eating and active living strategy and where the healthy food environments fits within that um, program of, of work. So uh, as has been mentioned, um, the strategy is in your show bags and so you have it there in front of you. And I think probably the key thing to, um, to point out is that uh, in terms of the scope of this document, it's looking at both encouraging healthy lifestyle at a personal level, so making uh, personal changes uh, to physical activity and nutrition, uh, as well as creating environments that make that healthy choice the easier choice to make. Um, today, of course, we'll be focusing particularly on the environments, but I'm going to take the opportunity today to talk a little bit about some of the programmatic work that we're doing, which is encouraging that uh, personal change. As has been alluded to, um, the, the strategy is looking at um, helping to meet our state plan targets in reducing the levels of overweight and obesity amongst adults as well as children. Um, but it's more than this as well. Uh, I don't need to tell this, this audience about the importance of um, physical activity and nutrition for a range of health benefits. Uh, we know that um, being physical acti physically active um, has a positive impact on people's mental health. We know particularly for children that uh, healthy eating um, helps with uh, good growth and development uh, and also uh, the different uh, contribution of uh, different parts of our diet um, can make a, a big difference in terms of the way we feel, our health, uh, as well as uh, looking at the issue of overweight and obesity as well. Our strategy has four strategic directions. The first is around environments, which today is about. Um, the second is statewide healthy eating and active living support programs, and Crunch and Sip is one of those. Uh, healthy eating and active living advice is part of the routine uh, work of local health districts and other government agencies. And finally, uh, education and information to help people make informed choices. So I'm going to take a moment or two to talk about um, our statewide healthy eating and active living support programs. Um, there are a number of programs that we're implementing in New South Wales that are truly being implemented at scale. These are programs that are reaching large numbers of our population. Um, we've got work in schools and childcare, which has been um, happening for, for a couple of years, and we've got very high rates of participation of childcare services as well as schools. So around 80% of um, our childcare services are part of our programs, and close to 70% of schools uh, across um, the three education sectors are participating. And we're uh, hoping, uh, we're, we're aiming for 80% participation uh, by next year, or by 2016. So that means that our programs are reaching about about 1.5 million children and their families. Our Get Healthy at Work program is about to um, start to be rolled out from July 2014. And this program will be working with uh, around 50,000 businesses and uh, 1 million workers and their families. So very big reach programs uh, which are, are impacting on a high proportion of our community. The Get Healthy Coaching Service has already been mentioned by Minister Humphrey, so more than 25,000 people have accessed this uh, treatment program and got good results. And we also um, have a program, uh, the Aboriginal Knockout Health Challenge, which is now in its third year and is reaching about 1,600 people uh, and about 30 communities. So as well as having these programs that, are, that have such a high reach, uh, we are also making sure that the programs are implemented well and that they're, they're having the outcomes that, we're, that we expect. Uh, in our childcare and school work, uh, we monitor um, what happens within those settings. And we know, for example, that with the programs in schools, that about 90% of schools do the Crunch and Sip program. Um, it has very high recognition. Um, uh, and I know that um, myself and colleagues and in the fruit and vegetable shop can often hear parents saying, well, what are we going to get for Crunch and Sip this week? And I think I can see a few people nodding and saying, yes, yes, we know this. We, um, we've experienced this as well. Um, so with our childcare and school program, we're actually anticipating um, from evidence that, um, that these programs will yield probably about a 0.5% reduction in child overweight and obesity per annum. That's based on experience in the Hunter New England, which has showed that a comprehensive approach that reach, reaches a wide 
pr uh, proportion of the population does actually work. Go for Fun is a treatment program um, that's offered to uh, children and their families who are above their healthy weight. Um, and we know that that program is successful in reducing waist circumference, uh, as well as increasing physical activity. And also importantly in this group, it uh, Im improves self-esteem as well. So those things are, are very important to us. Get Healthy is, has already been mentioned in terms of the outcomes, so uh, around four kilos of weight and five centimetre waist circumference reductions. Now, um, from a health perspective, um, uh, around 5% body weight reduction over a 12-month period is a clinically significant and important weight loss. So you might look at four kilos and think, well, that's not a lot, but in fact it is an important and significant, um, um, there's a significant health gain um, from such a sustainable weight loss. So we're very proud of those outcomes. And similarly for the knockout challenge, we're achieving around about a 5% five, a five body weight uh, reduction and six centimetre waist circumference reductions as well. So that's just a little plug of some of the work that we're currently doing, um, which we think is um, of high quality and, and reaching a, a broad uh, proportion of our populations. Um, we are um, also looking to do some new work in uh, an uh, integrated communication strategy because we recognise that there's a lot of different messages around food and nutrition and, and also physical activity as well. So we're looking at how we can um, bring together the work that's happening across government but also with our NGO and other partners uh, to actually um, communicate on an integrated front so that we're um, saying uh, the same messages um, but also bringing together the work that we're doing across different groups to show that there is in fact a lot that, that, a lot that is happening and um, outcomes that we're achieving along the way. So environments to support healthy eating and active living, clearly that's the focus for today. Um, and we're using the Swinburne um, definition of what is a healthy food environment. I won't read that out. Uh, I think it's already been referred to uh, earlier, this, earlier this morning as well. Uh, but it's about um, um, making sure that we have a food environment that meets the dietary guidelines that's available uh, and affordably priced. There's already a number of things that we're doing in New South Wales uh, around this issue. Um, so for example, um, the 8700 um, campaign as well as the Fast Choices legislation around kilojoule labelling in quick serve restaurants and you'll hear from Lisa Zabo later this morning to talk about the success of that program. And, uh, um, the NG uh, and NGOs are doing a range of activities as well. And at the national level, there's a, a, a range of initiatives um, that, are, that are happening in relation to food labelling. We're taking the time today to actually think about, well, what are our options? What are things that we can do in New South Wales to create healthy food environments? Um, and the, 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 the range of places that we can uh, intervene or actually have a look at uh, is, is really quite broad, as you can see from, um, from this overhead. So it's looking at um, options in the food composition. It's looking at labelling. Uh, we're looking at pricing, the promotion of foods, the provision of food in, in services and retail and trade. And so some of those examples could be around front of pack labelling or grants for food innovation, healthy food innovation, promoting healthy foods to kids, uh, as well as healthy canteens in workplaces, which is something that we'll be doing through the Healthy Worker Initiative, uh, the provision and price in stores, uh, as well as the food import export opportunities, and salt targets for processed foods. These are examples, um, but there are hundreds of examples of things that we might do. So today, uh, what we're aiming to do is to present and discuss some of the current things that we're doing in New South Wales and things that are happening at the national level that we're involved with. We'd like to talk about the, the gaps and opportunities and think about uh, recommendations for things that we could work on in the future. We'll hear from some leading experts uh, and key stakeholders uh, about the best ways to create healthy environments and we'll hear some of the challenges and some of the opportunities along the way um, and we will be looking at identifying some um, key areas for future action. 
Today's just the beginning for us. Um, it's, the, it's, it's a step along what I think will be uh, quite, a, quite a journey. So today the recommendations that will come from the forum will feed into um, a, a series of four smaller workshops uh, which will help us look at a range of um, or use a number of criteria to think about well, what, um, as, as well as using the evidence and experience of the people in this room, what does the evidence say in relation to the types of options or types of opportunities of things that we can work on. What would the impact be if we intervene? Um, and are there any equity considerations for the type of um, actions that um, we might do? Um, we also then need to be thinking about you know, are, are these suggestions feasible? Um, are the options acceptable? What are the risks of these things as well? So um, today is the starting point. Um, we'll generate some ideas and then we'll use those, we'll feed those ideas into some more um, uh, focused discussion about what are the best opportunities, what's feasible, what, what are the options for us um, as, a, as, as a coalition. So we're very pleased to be able to say that, um, well, we clearly everyone here today has a role to play. Uh, and we're delighted to get such a good range of uh, stakeholders and perspectives in, in the room. So 14% of this uh, group here uh, come from the industry perspective, about 12% from academia. <laughs> Um, we've got a, a, a good community representation, a good representation from NGOs, government and New South Wales Health. So I think we've got the right people in the room um, and so um, I'd really encourage people to participate fully in the discussions. We'll have discussion panels today and so um, we'll be uh, really, I suppose it's now over to you to uh, participate in the forum, listen to uh, uh, the experiences that we've had and to offer your ideas. So um, I think I'll leave it there. Thank you very much.